So this series, everybody at the beginning of the year is thinking about their body, you know, how to get it in shape and all that kind of good stuff. So a series called Body Language. Today's the third and final message of this little series. The first message was my body, his temple. Can you say that with me? My body, his temple. Last week was our church is his body. We're his body here on this planet. Okay, today, everybody, everybody is God's plan. Everybody is God's plan. And so we'll look at it today. I really want to talk about actually the body language that we give off. And we give off a body language. I know I'm doing it all the time. And my body language is sort of crazy body language. You know what I'm saying? But we all do it. We want to do it to the glory of God. Amen? So let's look at the message today. It's great to have, as always, my partner in crime down here, Roger the Dodger Johnson. He'll be running a computer. And uh, appreciate all the good work. And he helps with the graphics and all that kind of good stuff. I'm going to move some of this mess. All right? Let's go to the message this morning. I wish you just, you know, just ask the Lord to help us right now, and uh, we want we want you to be blessed in the Lord today. We want this to have mattered the time that you are spending with us today. Body language. Let's look. Let's move to Raj. Everybody has it. Everybody has body language. But are we maximizing its potential for the purpose and glory of God? Body language. We've all got it. Well, I don't got no body language. Yes, you do. We just see it. Saying we all got it. We've all got body language. What are we using these bodies and the message that we're giving forth for the glory of God? That's the purpose this morning of this message. Let's keep moving. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, and 20. All the scriptures will be on the screen. If you have a Bible, you can flip. But you're going to be flying. I'll tell you that. Because we've got lots of stuff to do. do want to let you know. If you'll go to PastorGary2Rs.com or you can go to FellowshipEnglewood.com The screen will come up. And you will get the message. This PowerPoint presentation will be on the front page. You click on it, you can go over everything like I'm doing right now. And that is used on the screen, on the computer on Monday. Is that correct, Raj? Be there waiting on you tomorrow. So you can review everything that we've done. Check it all out. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your what? Own oh, what? For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are hello. God's. Alright? So I am able. This is so important. I am able to be used to God. Why in this body? Why on this planet? I can be used of God in this body. This little statement, why don't you say it with me? Would you say that with me? I am able. Come on now, help me now. One more time. I am able. Able. Every point that we're going to make today, our major points is going to be above. It's got able on the end. You're able today. You got to lose that attitude that you don't understand what I've been through. I can't be a blessing to nobody. Not that shape you can't. But you can be. You are able to make a difference in this world. That's why you're here, friend. And you've got a body language. Let's look at it. I am able. Philippians 4, 13. Several scriptures. I do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We're flying, Raj. Put it in. We're going to move in another gear. Who art thou that thou judgest another man's servant? To his own master who stands or fall. Yea, he shall be home up. For God is what? Able to make him stand. 2 Corinthians 3, 2 through 6. You are our epistle, written on our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as you are manifested and declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, friend, but in the fleshly tables of our hearts. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. Say that with me. But our what? Sufficiency is of... God, who also has made us what? Able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. You are able in your body to be used of God. And you have a language, and that language should be used for the purposes and glory of God. 2 Corinthians 9 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. God is for you. Did you know that? He's for you. He's put you on this planet. He is behind you, being a blessing and being used of God. Ephesians 3.20. Now to Him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly, above all that we ask and think, according to the power which works what? In us. I am able 
in this body. And some of you might say, oh, you don't know my body. Listen, I got one. I know what it goes with. But it can be used for the glory of God. And you can be used for the glory of God. 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. He says, and the things you've heard, Timothy, of me among many witnesses, the same commend thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. We keep passing this thing on. You're able to be used of the Lord today. Luke 12, the Bible is full of this stuff. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of strife shall be beaten with a few stripes. For watch this. For unto whosoever much is given of him, say it with me, shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. You've been given tremendous talents and things and abilities and a language that you can reach your world with. And we're to use that for God's glory. I need to maximize the potential of my body language because this is so important. Everyone is reachable. Did you know that? Say that with me. Pop the next screen. Everyone is reachable. Would you say that with me? Everyone. Say it again with me. Come on. Everyone is reachable. Be honest. You've been reached for Christ here today. You that know the Lord. How many? Honestly, lift your hand. There was a time in your life maybe you even thought that you weren't reachable. Can I see some hands today? How can I be reached? You've been reached, haven't you? Somebody touched your life. Somebody was used in a mighty way to be a blessing to you. Listen, everybody's reachable. That's why you're important. We don't give up on anybody. Amen? Everybody's reachable. So if everybody's reachable, I might be part of that bigger plan to reach people, to be a blessing to people. So what I do in my body, how, I, how I, the language I give off is important because God can use me if I'm sold out to Him and I'm yielded to Him. That's what we're talking about today. I know it might be one of these messages, He's lost me. But I hope the dots, we're going to try to connect them. See, everyone's reachable. Why? Because I know it from God's Word. 2 Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slack concerning His promises, as some men count slackness, but He's long-suffering to us, Lord. Not willing that any should what? Perish. But that all should come to repentance. Everybody's reachable. And God's going to use you to reach people, to be a blessing. God can use me to reach out to others. Can you say that with me? God can use me to reach out to others. That's God's plan. Look at this lady. Who knows her? Somebody tell me. What's her name? Johnny Erickson Tyler. She's a quadriplegic. She has a ministry that's worldwide. You can hear her on WSB Radio every morning. I think she comes on before I do, about 7.05. I've heard her speak. You can drop a pin in any audience she speaks to. They're always jammed. You mean God can use somebody who's a quadriplegic? Yes, if He can use you. Excuse making it ain't going to cut it, friend. Are you here? You'll never be used of God. Say, I can't be used of God. Stop that. You can be used. God can touch your life. And you can do something mighty for God. Just keep moving. He can use you. How do you know He can use you, preacher man? How, here's how we know right here. 1 Corinthians 1, 26, 27. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God, this I know I qualify, but God had chosen the what? The foolish thing, they ask me, of the world to confound the wise. God has chosen the what? Weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. You are able to be used of God. And we're getting somewhere. Okay? Everybody is God's plan. Everybody's reachable. And everybody can be a reacher. Amen? Everybody can. So how do we do it? That's where we're moving right now. How do I do it then? This is where you really, if you like, if you're leaning, you need to set up. Here we go. How do I do it then? How do I do it? I just went into the Scriptures, said a little bit, and I've come up with some things I think that's going to be a help. Help me in my office. Here we go. Number one, if you say these with me, I need to be conformable. Let me tell you something. That chair, let me tell you something. You need to be conformable, not comfortable. Okay? You need to be conformable to the image of Christ, not comfortable. Being a reacher of people, reaching out, caring, it's not always going to be an easy thing. But if you're conformed to the image of Christ, it's amazing how easy it can become. You need to be conformable to the image of Christ. This is the Scriptures. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? That you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, God has a plan for your life. Your plan, His plan for your life is for you to use that body He gave you to its maximum potential for His glory. Okay? And you can do that. 
if you're conformed to the image of Christ. Philippians 2, 5, it says, Let this mind, the mind of Jesus, be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We need His mind. We, you know, the way we used to think isn't going to cut it if we're going to be used totally of God. That's why faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. We put that Word in us and we're changed. How many just would testify this morning and would say, because of God's Word, it's changed me. Can I see your hands all over the house? Change the way you think. Good grief, I used to be a hell raiser. Didn't think there was a God in heaven. I thought I came from a monkey or something like that kind of mess. Where'd that come from? That's just nuts. Where'd I learn all the truth? Learning from the Bible. Thought just, you know, relationships with women. That's just about sex and stuff like that. You know, my marriage matters. Amen? Being a father, a mother, having kids, raising a family. Where'd I learn that? Newsweek? No. The Bible. Why? Conform to His image. He can change you. He can make a difference in your life. Philippians 3.10 That I may know Him. That's who I want to know. Amen? That I may know Him. The power of His resurrection. The fellowship of His sufferings. Being made what? Conform. Able. I'm able. Amen? Conform. Able. Under His death. So I need to be conformable. Galatians 2.20 I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, but hallelujah. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me, being conformed to his image. That's how we can maximize this body language. Are you hearing me? God can make a big difference in our life. I used to never sing. And these fellows right here probably still don't think I can. But I know the boy from Arkansas, though. Because we don't like Arkansas. I done told you we don't like Arkansas. <laughs> now I told everybody and it's going to go to the radio. <laughs> Jesus loved Arkansas. I agree Jesus loved it. I need to be conformed with His image. I ain't there yet. The <laughs> boy, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm done not. <laughs> Let's take a poll. How many don't like Arkansas? <laughs> There's several in the middle. <laughs> Sorry, son. How many love Him anyway? There we go. There we go. Listen, before I became a Christian, I never sang. Before I became a Christian, you wouldn't see my teeth. God made a difference in my life. He put a joy in my heart. And the more I grow, and boy, I still got lots of going to do. The more and more and more I can be conformed to His image. And I can maximize this crazy body language that God wants me to have to reach others. For Him. Let's look at something else. So number one, I need to be conformable. Number two, I need to be vulnerable. Can you say that? I need to be vulnerable. I need to be vulnerable. Let's look at the Scripture. John 1, 11, Jesus came unto His own, and His own did what? Receive Him. I tell you, if out of the gate you're going to say, well, they won't listen to me. Out of the gate you're going to say, I can't make a difference. Listen, you're dead in the water. Yeah, you're going to have to be vulnerable. Yeah, some people aren't going to accept you. Yeah, it's going to get a little tough. So a big deal. That's life, isn't it? Say, don't quit before you get started. Listen, I need to be vulnerable. Guess what? He came into his own, his own received him not. I didn't put verse 12 on the screen because some of you, I believe, know it. Let's quote it if you know it. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on His Well, she's lamb. I guess it made a difference if He can. Amen? We're going to have to be vulnerable if we're going to maximize the potential God has for us, for His kingdom. Look at what He said in Matthew 5, Jesus speaking. You've heard that it's been said an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. I say unto you that you resist not evil. Now that's sort of a strange saying. It basically means this. If you go hide at home in your little world and never try to touch people's lives because they're evil out there, it's just crazy. Boy, the, the sick need a physician last time I checked, don't they? So, it's not the whole. Yes, there's an evil world. Yes, there's problems. But friend, don't resist doing that. Look, whosoever shall smite thee on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. Verse 40, if any man will sue you with the law and take your coat, man, give him your cloak too. Do you see that? Say, and whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him too. Go the extra mile. 
Some other scriptures. I say if you love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Verse 46, if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans or, or the ungodly, don't they do that? See, friend, we need to be vulnerable. Does that make any sense to you so far or what? Okay? Need to be conformable. I can't do it in my strength. No, I can't. He wants to change me. He does. But he will. I need to be vulnerable. Can't be scared to death that I can't be used of God. You can be used of God in your world. And by the way, there are a lot of us that do a lot of things inside these four walls of this building here, but the bulk of the work is out there. Touching, reaching, stuff I never see that other people don't ever see, and big deal. We ain't keeping score anyway. He is. Amen? Get out there and do something for the glory of God with your body. Number three. How can I maximize my body language for its full potential? I need to be approachable. I need to be approachable. Listen, if you've got walls up so thick nobody can get through, if you're meaner than a snake, that's what we say in the South. Meaner than a snake, meaner than a hornet. Listen, you've got to be approachable. Jesus was approachable. Several scriptures real, real quick. Jesus was approachable. I guess if the son of a living God who created the planet can be approachable, you can. I mean, no matter how great you think you are, you ain't that yet. Okay? You can be approachable. Jesus, look at it. Fishermen came to him. These were tough guys. Rough guys. 39. He said to them, come and see. They came. They saw where he dwelt in the boat with him that day. But it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak, they followed him, was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first finds his own brother Simon, said unto him, We found the Messiah, which is being interpreted to Christ. These fishermen followed Christ because he was approachable. They could come up to him. Let's look at some other people. The religious came to Jesus. John 3, a man named of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a very religious fellow. He was a ruler of the Jews. Verse 2, he came to Jesus when? By night. You know why he came to him? Because he was approachable. He thought he could come to him. Do people think they can come to you? So, think about it. And I don't, I don't think all of us have got this down pat. That's why we're preaching this morning. Amen? Can people come to you? They ought to be able to. He came in at night and said, Rabbi, we know you're a teacher from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. He was approachable. Let's see who else came to him. Outcast came. The woman of Samaria came to Jesus. There comes a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said, Come, give me a drink. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that you, being a Jew, talk to me? I'm a woman of Samaria. The Jews have no dealings with us, we're outcasts. Guess what happened? He talked to her, told her all kinds of things, shared his love for her. Look at verse 27. And upon this came his disciples. They saw him talking. He is talking to this woman. What is he doing talking to that Samaritan? They marveled that he talked with her. Yet no man said, What seekest thou? Or why talkest thou with her? They knew they better not go there. Right? I'll talk to who I want to talk to. And that's what he was doing. But let's see what happened in this woman's life. The woman left her water pot. She went her way into the city. She said to the men, and she had known a lot of them, Come see a man which told me all things ever that I did. Is not this the Christ? And then look at this. All these outcasts came back to him. Then they, then they went out of the city and came unto him. Isn't that great? Listen, if we're approachable, not only can we reach one person, shoot, we might reach a bunch more. Amen? They find out Fellowship Church is a place that anybody can come. Now, we're not going to throw the Bible out the door. We're going to love God's Word. But you know what? I don't, have to, I don't have to worry if somebody is in a pair of shorts or a pair of pants. Church I went to, ladies, if you went the first week and you came in a pair of slides, second week somebody would come to you and say, now you need to wear a dress if you're coming back next week. You know what? If the church is like this in Englewood, you can have it. That ain't fellowship. Okay? And if that's the way your church is back home, that's life. You have to deal with it, not me. We ought to accept people. Amen? How many the first time you went to church, you didn't think you had anything to wear, so you thought you wouldn't even go? Let me see your hand. Come on. Be honest. You can come here. I just ask you to come covered up. Amen? Amen. <laughs> come covered up. Covered up. <laughs> All right? Here we go. We need to be approachable as a church. Let's keep looking. Crooks came. Can crooks come to Fellowship Church? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. 
How many fruits we got here? Be quiet. <laughs> quiet! <laughs> hey, you don't want to know some things I know. I hear about somebody sitting right next to you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey! Crooks need Jesus last time I checked, amen? Zacchaeus. There was a man named Zacchaeus. He's the chief among the publicans. He was a crook. He was as dirty as the day is long. And he sought to see Jesus. Who he was. He couldn't see because he was a little guy. Had to climb up a sycamore tree. Why am I saying Jesus was approachable, wasn't he? Let's look. Somebody else? The sick came. A woman with an issue of blood was diseased for 12 years. She came behind him. And she touched the hem of his garments. And this is what she thought. She said within herself, If I can touch just the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. Wouldn't it be great to have the attitude in this community? You know, if I can get to fellowship, I just feel like I can get help. I can be loved there. I can be touched there. Wouldn't it be great? I want that kind of attitude. Amen? That reputation. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. But it's doable. It's doable. Jesus was approachable. Sinners came. Watch what I want. How many sinners we got in the building? Aren't you glad you can come to Jesus? Amen? Come on. Luke 7. There was a woman in the city. She was a sinner. The word carries the connotation she was a prostitute. When she knew that Jesus said it meet in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster box of ointment. If there's one place a prostitute wouldn't find a warm welcome, it'd be in whose house? A Pharisee's house. These were the religious uppity ups. Okay? But she came anyway. She stood at his feet behind him. She was crying. She began to wash his feet with her tears. She wiped them with her hair. She kissed Jesus' feet. She anointed them with ointment. But look at what the Pharisee said. When the Pharisee, which had bidden Jesus, saw it, he spake within himself. He didn't have the guts to say it out loud. This man, if he knew, if he were a prophet, he would have known who would want manner of woman this is that touches him for she's a what? Sinner. Isn't it great that sinners can come? Amen? Don't you want a church where sinners can come? Amen? Let's pray some more. Don't you want a church where sinners can come? Amen? Praise the Lord. Listen, we'd all be in bad shape if it wasn't for that. So, we've learned so far three things. Okay? And now the next thing we're going to look at today. How do I do it? I need to be readable. So far, so far we said great things. God's good. Amen. But how do I do it, preacher man? How do I be approachable? How can I be approachable? Okay? How can I do it? I need to be readable. Can you say that? I need to be readable. And guess what? We can read you now. You are readable already. But we need, to, we need us to be readable that we want our bodies and this language we're giving off to be to the glory of God. Amen? They need to see that in us. And I just came up with four things. Number one, countenance. Can you say that word with me? Countenance. countenance. What is countenance? It's your appearance. It's especially the expression on your face. Well, I love you. <laughs> No, you don't. If you do, somebody will tell you face. Listen, I, I'm a Christian. I go to that church over there. You ought to come with me. I don't think I will. <laughs> you go. Yeah. I'll find something better to do. Alright? Listen, countenance. We know what countenance is. Listen, that's how we're readable. That's how we can use our body language to the max, our countenance. It matters. It matters to the preacher up here. I preach many times and the devil will use this. And somebody won't mean a thing by it. They'll be looking mean than a snake. I'm preaching. Here's somebody over here who looks like he hates my guts. And the devil will use that in my ear. He hates your guts. And I'll go look this way. <laughs> Listen, countless matters. Let's talk about it. Let's look at the Bible. Listen, if you got teeth, show them, would you? If you got teeth, use them. Smile. Come on. Can we practice? Come on. <laughs> don't you want to come to a place, or don't you want to talk to somebody that has a joyful spirit? So, 
How many, when they need help, they run to the person who's always depressed? Oh, I need to go see them. <laughs> we don't do that. Smile for crying out loud. If you got teeth, show them. Let's keep moving. Roger, you're scaring me. Lift up your eyes. Here's what Jesus said. Jesus said this. Say there for not just four months, then comes the harvest. Look at you. Come on. Lift up your eyes. Look on the fields. They're already white to harvest. You know what? Listen. We ought not go around with our head now. You know? And you might be doing this, and I know it's not necessarily an easy thing. That's why you've got to start be conformable. Amen? But you can be different. Come on. Don't be satisfied with the way you've always been. I'm not saying try to be somebody else, but maximize the potential that God has for you in your body. Lift your head up. I don't like to talk to somebody with your head down. I'm looking at the top of their head. <laughs> look at people. How many like when people talk to you, they look you in the eyeball? So, people got shifty eyes. They don't look, you know, you, it might not be there's a problem, but there's a problem. Okay? Lift up your eyes. You count them. Smile. If you got dimples, I got them. Amen. Use them. You know, come on. I, that sounds silly. True, did not it? How are people going to approach you if they're reading from you? You can say, Lord, I love you and I love Jesus. But if they ain't seeing it on your face, they're not getting the message. And they're not going to come. They're not going to feel comfortable to be able to talk to you. Okay? How do you help your countenance? This has been a big help for me. My wife knew I needed help years ago. And she got this verse and she stuck it in my office. <laughs> Read this every day. And I did. And it's helped me a lot. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen? How many knows your countenance changes when you think on good things? Amen? Think on positive things. Think on the Word of God. Think on how much God loves you. Think on things like that. It can change your whole face. Here's what Paul said. Verse right after that. He said, those things which you have both learned and received and heard. And say that with me. Seen in me. Do. And the God of peace shall be with you. You know what? I couldn't say do everything I do. I still make mistakes. I'm still learning. But one thing I can say is this. I can say, smile. I smile. Make me a big hero or nothing. There's something I do. I like to smile. I'm glad I got a smile. Amen? Listen, we can do that. We can look at people in the eye. We can do those things. Those are good things. Your countenance. I need to be readable. What else do we got, Raj? Number two. I know this is taking a while, but this is important. Are you with me today? This is important. We've come to church today to get some. Number two, conversation. I am readable by my conversation. Well, I go to church and I do this. But if, excuse me, crap comes out of your mouth. Listen, if it comes out of your mouth, I know y'all don't like that word, but that's what it is. When you backbite, when you gossip, when you put people down. Oh, but I love Jesus come to my church. I wouldn't go. Are you here? Who does love the preacher man? Conversation. People can read us by what comes out of our mouth. I'm not saying we're going to be perfect. I know we're going to make mistakes. Our tone. Ladies, let me see your hands. How many to ladies in the building tone matters? <laughs> Men, how many in the building tone matters? About there as many, a few of us. <laughs> a few of us. But Rick, I tell you, your tone. I love you. Your conversation. Now, I, I can't go on. Here we go. The tongue is a fire. It's a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defiles the whole body. You can do everything else seemingly perfect. Open up your big mouth like I do and ruin it all. <laughs> Who is that? See, you just ruin it all. It can defile the whole body. It's set on fire 
the course of nature. It's set on fire of hell. Our tongue. Some other verses. But the tongue can no man tame. It's an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father. And therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Right? Doth the fountain send forth the same place sweet water and bitter it doesn't work. Oh, I love Jesus. I am mean as a snake. <laughs> it don't work. A fountain don't do that, dude. Okay, the tongue. Who's a wise man among you do with knowledge? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness and wisdom. Several verses. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be you holy in all manner of what? Conversation. conversation. Look at this one. First Peter, likewise you wives, be in subjection to your husbands. If any may not of the word, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of their wives. Many a woman has won her husband to Jesus by the way she talks and her demeanor and what she's done in the home. It's amazing. They behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Ephesians 4.29 Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of the edifying, they can minister grace to people. This is a good one. Be not deceived. Say that with me. Evil communication corrupts good manners. How are you going to be approachable if people are reading from you that you don't have good manners? You ought to still say thank you. Amen? Thank you. Appreciate that. Amen? Good conversation. Good manners. People don't like it sometimes when I say ma'am. And some of you are here. Because it makes you feel old. I'm sorry. My mama taught me that. And I love my mama. And I'm going to keep saying ma'am. Amen? Amen? Yes ma'am. No ma'am. My kids say it. We don't mean nothing by it. To us, that's good manners. You know? I need to be readable. Let's keep moving. These messages wear me out. <laughs> Contact. We're almost done. We're almost done. What do I mean? What was the first one? Countenance. Conversation. Contact. What am I talking about? I'm talking about, I'm talking about touching people. I'm talking about hugging people. Hey, come here, dude. Yeah, come on. How you mean? How you mean? Good. Good to see you, man. Hey, we welcome you to England. We're glad you're here. We want to be a blessing to you. You know? It matters, don't it? It does. See what I'm saying? It matters. You know what I'm saying? You're readable if you're reaching out. You're going to be, you're going to be readable if you're a person that loves people. Oh, we love Jesus. We love people. If it's just a slogan on a billboard, it ain't worth a dime. We can reach out. Contact. Let's look at a few things. And I don't have time. I think this is one we know. I just put up several things. You can go to the website, look at all the scriptures if you want to. He, this is Jesus. He touched him. Keep moving. He touched her hand. He touched their eyes. He touched his tongue. He sure did. Touch that sucker tongue. He touched his ear. Peter, cut off that guy's ear. What did Jesus do? Touch him. Put it back on. He washed their dirty, stinking feet. The Son of the living God. John 13, 5, he took a towel and a basin and he washed their nasty feet. Cut off the phone. He hugged John. He hugged John. He hugged him. What do I mean? The Bible says that John leaned upon his what? Breast. To us, that's language. He hugged him. And I'm sure he hugged the others as well. This is so important. By the way, check this out sometime. Hugging provides healing. I've seen several articles. They've been sent to me. There's something about your body chemistry and hemoglobins and words I don't even understand that are energized and that are activated when people touch you. How many people, when you've been sick, somebody will come over, touch your hand, pray for you, hug you, touch you, makes you feel better? Yes or no? Yes. Contact matters. Be readable. Be a person that's reaching out. We at Fellowship Church, we reach out. We hug people here. And I know not everybody's used to that. And that's understandable. I hear that. That's okay. But don't make us change just because you ain't that way. I like to hug people. Amen? A lot of times I'm hugging somebody and I'm the one that needs the encouragement. And it does that for me. Contact. Next thing is this. And we're done this morning. 
compassion. All this other stuff was physical. Your face, your words, your touch. This is an action, but it also can be seen. People can tell if you love them. You agree with that? Amen. This can be a loving place. I've heard it said so many times. People go, boy, fellowship, they make me feel so good. Daisy says it all the time. She comes here. First thing, when she came, Rebecca, her friend who comes here, invited her, cared for her. And then when she came, I think Rebecca had confidence that we wouldn't treat you like a doormat. You see what I'm saying? And she, she still to this day, she invites people, come. That's, that's, and she says this, they're my family. Wouldn't it be great if when people come here they can feel that way? We're family. Compassion. Jesus said this, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. But the second's like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. That's the bottom line. Loving the Lord and loving people. We can be readable. We're to love Jesus Christ. We're to love people. Come to the comments and we're done. Love gives. Love serves. Love cares. People will tell you you love them when you're serving them, giving to them, caring for them. It makes a difference. Love shows and tells. You know what love shows and tells? Love shows and tells. Hang on. Guess. What does love show and tell people? That they what? Yeah. Matter! Pop the screen. <laughs> that they matter! When we love people, it says to them, I guess I do matter. And then you can talk to them about God's love. Well, they were nice to me. That's how I was going to Christ. I went to that church with an attitude. Mama wanted to go. I thought she was crazy. But I went there and the thing that won me over was that little old country church. Those people were nice to us. My mother was a drunk and I was a hell raising teen. And they said, come on in. Sit with us. One family said, sit with us. That changed my life forever. Compassion writers. Matthew 9. We're done this morning. Jesus went about all the cities, the villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing every sickness, every disease among the people. But when He saw the multitude, He was moved with compassion. Because they fainted, they were scattered abroad as sheep not having a shepherd. Then said He unto His disciples, The harvest is plentiful, The laborers are few. Pray therefore, the Lord of the harvest and He'll send forth the laborers into His harvest. We don't need laborers going out to the vineyard that aren't approachable. That when you read them, they're just mean. We need people going out there that are filled with the love of Jesus. Amen? They show it on their face and in their eyes and everything else. The message today is done. Everybody's reachable. That's God's plan. Roger's plan. I'm able to maximize my body language for His glory. If I'm going to do that, I must be. Say it with me. Say it with me. Conformable, number two. Vulnerable, number three. Approachable. And number four. Readable. Readable. Let's stand together, would you? Mr. Acapella Sound Man, these guys are going to join me. And I'm going to sing a song. It's just a little ditty. Do you have it, Roger? If not, I think we'll remember arms. If we are the body, why are His arms reaching? Why are His hands healing? Why are His words teaching? And if we are the body, why aren't His feet going? Why is His love not showing? Then there is a way. If we are the body, why aren't His arms reaching? Why aren't His hands healing? Why aren't His words teaching? And if we are the body, why aren't His feet going? Why is His love? Then there is a way. Jesus is the way.
Jesus Christ loves you to pieces today. And friend, if you're here today, if you'd say, Pastor Clark, if I die, I don't want to go to heaven. I've never truly trusted Christ. And maybe you're in a church, but you'd be honest. And that's the key with God, just being honest and sincere. You'd say, I did, I did, I did. I was a member or something, but I never had a relationship with Jesus Christ. God loves you. He died on the cross for you. He cares for you. He wants you to know that you know that you know that when you die, you're going to go to heaven. Amen? He don't want you to wrestle with those sins and things in the past. Give them to Him. He'll forgive you. But you need to be honest and sincere and believe in Him today. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. Greatest verse of all time probably. That He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loves you today. Jesus died on that cross for you. You weren't there. I was not there. We don't have anything to do with it. He did it all. All we can do is believe in it. That's all He asked us to do. That's all He ever asked was to believe in Him. Hebrews 11.6 Without faith it's impossible to please God. We must believe He is. It's a reward of those who diligently to seek Him. The Bible says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved today. Is there someone in the building with heads bowed, eyes? Said, Friend, this is what we do all the time here. We care about people going to heaven. Sins forgiven. This is not abnormal for us today. Is there something to build and say, Pastor Clark, if I died, I would know I'd go to heaven. But I'd like to know Christ as my Savior. And I'd like to nail that today. I'm not going to bother you. I'm just going to in a minute lead you in a silent prayer right where you stand. But you can take care of that. You don't have to impress me. Get right with the Lord and you can do it today. How about hands up all over the building? We had many this morning in the first service ask Christ to be their Savior. Here's some here. Can I see your hands? Don't let pride take you to hell. You hear me? It's a free gift. Accept it today. Is somebody else in the building? I'm looking. All right. You can put those hands down. Listen. Whether you raised your hand or you didn't, if you're sincere and honest with the Lord in this prayer, and you mean it from the bottom of your heart, He'll come into your heart and be your Savior and Lord. I know. How do I know? Because He did in my life. He's no respecter of persons. He loves you. The ground's level at the cross. But that's where you've got to come. Would you pray with me and mean it in your heart? Dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I've done wrong, made mistakes, bad choices. And Lord, I just want you to forgive me. I ask for that, Lord, today. For you to forgive me. I'm being honest. I mean it, Lord. And Lord, I want you to know, best I know how, I believe in you. I believe you did come, Jesus. I believe you lived. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose from the dead because you love me. And again, Lord, I don't, I don't understand why you would love me. But I know that you do and I believe that. And I ask you, Lord, to be my Savior. I want to live for you. Help me, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. With heads bowed one last moment. Who said that today, Miss Billy? That prayer. 
Would you raise that hand and put it up and down? I'm not going to embarrass you. I just want to just give you a chance to be encouraged. Yes, thank you here and here and here. I'm looking up here up top to the left. Back here, sir. Ma'am, God bless you. God loves you pieces. You know that, don't you? That's why Jesus came. Up here in the top. God bless you, little one. Amen. Finally, who would say as we close today, Pastor, I want to maximize my body language for the glory of God. I bet you mean it. Don't just say it. Raise your hand and press me. How many would like that? I want to close out with a prayer with your hand lifted high. I want to maximize what I can do in my body for Jesus. Hold those hands to heaven. Come on. Father, bless these that if those hands lifted high, they want to make a difference. They've heard the word. It's been plain, Jane. They can see it. I pray you'll use it, Lord, in their life today and through the week. And help this decision they're making to be a real decision and make a difference in their community, in their family. God bless them, I pray. Thank you for their willingness to be used of you. We love you, Lord. Thank you for this great day. Thank you for Acapulco. And all this has been done.